content may contain sexually oriented content. 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 Listener discretion is advised. Three, one, go. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love Line, Coast to Coast. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Is that it? That's it. All right. Phone number. Did I give that out? 1-800-LOVE-191? i not sure if I heard that or not. All right. Let's uh, go to the phones and take some calls. Drew, is your wife uh, still awake? Yeah. Why? Why? I got to talk to her about some travel. Oh, good. I get that phone number. Charissa? Yeah. Let's go. Charissa. Charissa? Mm -hmm. You're uh, 16. What's up? Um, I think that when I was younger, I may have been molested. Um, And I wanted to know if some of my, basically, tied to, it's like the signs that I've seen growing up can be justified. The signs that you've seen growing up? What do you mean? Signs. Like, um... When I was nine, I wet the bed, and I hadn't wet the bed since I was two years old. Okay, so all of a sudden something changed, huh? Yeah. And you think something happened right around then? Yeah. Um, I started seeing my father, who I hadn't seen since I was seven months old, hmm. for four months, and then I suddenly quit. What? I got scared. Because something was happening, or? I don't, I don't know. What do you mean you start seeing him? Where have you been? Like, my mom. I told my mom I wanted to see him. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't, you know. Or why was he gone? I think that's sort of what we're asking. Um, he was beating my mom when All I was right. little mm-hmm. and she left him. All right. So I mean, maybe it was just some sort of re-traumatization or post-traumatic stress reaction just to having this guy around that was terribly abusive. Because I wet my bed, too, for a long time. Think about I didn't, though. I never yeah. wet the bed. She's, she's yeah. much All right. more normal You're than you are. better than I am. Well, ever since then, I had, like, horrible nightmares. Listen, as a woman, couldn't you just put a tube sock in your vagina or something oh, yeah, if you're yeah. wetting the nice. bed? A cork? Yes, nice. Oh, well, not a cork, but I'm just saying a ball of socks or something. Okay. All right, so, uh, listen, have you, uh, you ever talked to a therapist or anything like that? Yeah, I'm going now for problems with severe depression, anxiety. All right. Um, All right, Shreza, we... I, it, and, uh, attempted suicide. Right, let's put it this way. You are some sort of trauma survivor, Okay. And what happens when people have been traumatized, whether it's sexually abused or being in the presence of an abusive guy that beats the crap out of your mom, whatever it is, it wires in a kind of a mechanism in your brain for dealing with interpersonal stress. People tend to rely on dissociation and tend to rely on very primitive kinds of interpersonal exchanges of feelings. And that that's what you're getting into here. And that is something that can be treated. You're in treatment. It really doesn't matter whether it did or didn't happen specifically. It's just not the issue. You were badly traumatized. You have a lot of symptoms now and you're in treatment. Fine. Keep going. All right. Let's uh, talk to you. What the hell name is that? I don't know. Okay, then let's talk to Dan. <laughs> Dan, you're uh, 23. Keep in mind, if you have a name that I can't pronounce or read, there's a much less likely chance of me punching you up. <laughs> Dan? Yeah. What's that's an on? easy one. You're yeah, 23. Right. What's going on? Uh, not too much. I've got a camping trip coming up this weekend, and a uh, best friend of mine, I know she wants to have sex with me. It's going to be a little alcohol involved, of course. Your best friend? Yes, yes. He's, yeah. Well, not too much of a best friend, but a close friend, I guess we could say. Why Why aren't you in a relationship with her? Uh, well, it's kind of just the fact that we don't... I don't know. I really yeah, uh, don't want to break up the friendship. <laughs> what no. You, yes. you, you're not, she's not that hot. You're not, you're not that into her. You're not that into her. Come on, dude. Subconsciously, I'm probably not into her. Subconsciously? You're very clear with this. You're not that into her. That that up into her. Right, okay. She's got, oh, the friendship. I don't really know. But put I, it this way. She's, you know, in the looks department, she's a, what, a seven? Seven and a quarter? Yeah, maybe yeah. six and a half. Seven six and, six and a half, <laughs> seven and a quarter. Yeah, yeah. Right, right in that right range. In that range. Okay, now, if she was a nine, nine oh, plus, no, definitely. No problem. you'd be yeah, into her. Yeah, yeah you wouldn't right. have any yeah. problem with the breaking up the friendship. No All right, so be honest, okay, please? Right. No problem. No and problem. she's more into you than you are into her. Definitely. And so now you're going... Raping? No, yeah. we're going camping. No, I, I decided to change the name of uh, camping to raping. Because, oh, okay, uh, got gotcha. to make it a little more interesting. That's all that goes on out there. Yeah. I'm uh. just saying, it's to be honest, because here's what parents, parents hear, hey, we, we want to uh, take your 15-year-olds out camping, whole group of boys and girls. They hear camping, they say, yeah, go ahead, be my guest. But if they hear what it really is, raping, now you think twice. Yeah. You think, well... 
All right, but uh, you know, chaperone. take an extra granola bar right. or something. Oh, God. Protection. Well, listen, he, he didn't ask his question. Oh. Yeah. All right. Dan? All right, yeah. Your question. Uh, the question was, I know she's got HPV. Nice. Now, how contractable was that? To a highly, system? highly, highly. Profoundly. Very highly. Yes. Well, yes. It's not so bad if a guy gets it, no, though, except for... No, it's not so bad if you get it, but you're going to get it. I mean, I don't want to be, like, spreading it around or anything. You like may that. already have it, Dan. How many partners you had? Me, personally, I've actually, honestly, only had three. No, I probably don't have it. Wear a condom can reduce the risk. If they've been treated and she doesn't have a lot of them, well, you know, it's a condom reduce it quite a bit, yeah. doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yes, okay. It does. So, you know, wear a condom and take your risk if you want. But it doesn't sound like somebody you're particularly into. It's a right, friendship it's you want like to preserve. She is very into you, obviously. That's why she has settled for the friendship. And you might be really screwing things up by giving her the idea. There's even her the idea there's something more potentially here. Yeah. Because Dan is going to look at this. Dan's going to have himself uh, 16 lucky loggers and forget about this by the time they're done making the huevos rancheros the next morning That's on right. the iron skillet where she'll be She's living in. this dream oh, no. for, this for a good year or so. This, well, not the dream. This is it. The connection is made, you know. Yeah, but what I'm saying is is the connection will be made and then it will be severed the next morning yeah. and then she will be sort of living that for yeah. uh, quite some yeah. time. Yes, yes. Whereas for Dan, it truly will be severed. Yes. The rule is never made. Uh, Il Ilithia? Ilithia? Ilithia. Yeah. What hmm. yeah. the hell pain in the ass no. parents you got? Huh? What a horrible name. <laughs> Shut up. Your parents get a nice kick in the nuts. It, it comes from, uh, well, lithia comes from it. I don't care. Your dad deserves a good kick in the nuts. <laughs> Wait, the, the, so the defense is the reason lithia, lithia, comes, lithia. From lithia comes from it? I don't even know what lithia is. <laughs> what is lithia? Well, I don't know what lithia is either. A lithia or lithia? We well, said lithia comes from it. Lithia, yeah. She was, uh, she was the one that, that um, you know the... The, the biblical story of, um, what is it? God, I can't remember now. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> really up on this. No, um, Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Cain All and right. Abel. She couldn't have named you Abel. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> no, it's like. All right, baby. Hey, listen, I, I don't want to. I don't want to go. See, here's the thing about the Bible. I don't mind the hits of the Bible. I don't. I don't mind the Johns and the Josephs and the Marys. The I don't like the deep cuts. Yeah. I don't like when you're getting into the B side of the Bible. When you're getting into that Hezekiahs and the Eliphias and stuff. That that's a Bible no, no, deep no, no, cut. No, no. She she was the one that um. I, that she was. I, like I know. How would you shut up? Does anyone know what I'm talking about with was the Bible deep cut? Vampire chick. Is that what she said? I don't know. Oh my god. You know what I mean? The deep yes. Bible yes, names. I hear you. The ones that no one's heard of. Yes. The B sides. A white crystalline oxide of lithium is what it says in the dictionary for lithium. All right. Drew, put that away. Okay, listen, Vampira. What's your question? Okay, I just wanted to know if, um, well, during sex, uh, my boyfriend, he tends to rip me. And I wouldn't know if, like, I could get, if, if it could get any severe, like, if I could get an infection because of it. Yeah, potentially. I mean, what's his name? Goliath? Goliath? No, it's <laughs> Samson. It's but, but there, there are there are risks to this, I suppose. And some women get recurrent sort of tears way down at the fornix, way in the back back of the uh, vagina there. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, it's something that the, the deal breaker for some relationships because there's sort of an anatomical no, problem. No, actually, I mean, it doesn't hurt or whatever. It is. It's to the point where it, I kind of listen to it. Listen for it because like, you can hear it tear. Oh, that's nice. Your, your, <laughs> it's all, no. your vagina sounds like a Velcro wallet. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, oh, with the S word. Huh? Close to the S word there. Very close. I know. I didn't say it though. All right. All right. What is your question? No, but that's that. What, yes, it's not good for you to tear body parts. No, no and I was, uh, if it could just get any serious than that. Yeah, if, uh, yeah I suppose it could, but it doesn't tend to. She seemed uh, loony as a tune, that Alithia. Yeah, listening, during sex, listening for the vaginal rip, tear. It's quite, quite a little distracting, mightn't it? Yeah, you couldn't just uh, crank up the Zeppelin and enjoy yourself. You gotta, you gotta listen for the vaginal tear. And by the way, do you think she's hearing a vaginal tear or is she just a little whacked out? Yeah. And you know how, you know how Tori Amos sees fairies? Yes. Sort of the equivalent of Alithia? 
hearing the vaginal tear. Mm -hmm. These are those gold dust moments. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I think it's more angel dust. Jake? Yeah. You're 15? Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm from Dallas. And uh, my uh, recently, or back in October, my friend's family was uh, killed. They were murdered by a... Uh, uh, the, their dad, he, uh, his dad was visiting and he murdered, uh, his mom and his little brother. His dad was visiting? His, his dad. Your friend's dad. Yeah, was visiting from right. St. Louis to Dallas and he, uh, he walked in and he started in their house and he shot his mom and his little brother. Mm -hmm. And he also mm -hmm. shot him, but he got away. Uh, and I'm in like pretty depressed, I'm in really depressed like ever since then. And what I'm happened to the dad? What? What happened to the dad? He killed himself. So everyone, he, this guy tried to kill the whole entire family, and your friend got away. Yeah. Is he okay now? Uh, yeah, he's okay. Is I went to, like, spent the hospital. I went to the hospital with him, and I spent the night and stuff. Yeah. When when did this uh, when did this go down? October. Wow. He's still in the hospital. No. No. But back back when he was in the hospital. How's he doing now? Uh, he's he's depressed, but he's got a, a lot of people like supporting him and stuff. I hope like he's getting his, treatment, his too. Wow, that's just awful. What, what was up with the dad? Anybody know? Uh, he, I think, he, I don't know, he went crazy. Yeah, but, yeah. but what? Well, was he doing whatever. speed or something? Whatever. Uh, I don't know. That was a mess. Like, he lost all his money and went broke and stuff, and he, I think he was jealous because my friend's mom was, like, doing really well. No. Uh, she opened up her own business and everything. All right. Listen, I, I remember, you know, not as traumatizing, but uh, the, the first time I heard my dad scream out, Sea Sucker, when he was driving, and uh, that was, you know, fairly traumatic. You, I know your dad I, had the energy to, to uh, spit that word out. I, he must, you know, it was 25 years ago, but uh, I'm still living with that today. You know, when you hear your dad... It's okay to hear your dad say the S word or even the F word, but when he starts getting those compound and hipper cuss words like sea sucker, it's biz it's it's like it's bizarre. He's not supposed to even know those. No, where do you pick that up? On the street? He's <laughs> running with a bad crowd. It's like carrying a five year old set. Yeah. Hey, whoa, whoa. He's your dad yelling sea sucker from his uh, 57 Volkswagen. All right, so uh, Jake, so uh, I'll, I'll, you want to help this guy? I was what? Well, that, that, why is this so traumatizing to you? Do you have a history of something uh, in uh, yourself, a difficulty growing up, or no? Well, I've had other, I've had friends commit suicide. Yeah. And other ones. And, uh, your, is your family together? Yeah. Everybody they're, okay? Uh, they're still together and everything. All, All right. right. So, let, so Jake, be thankful for your family being so, uh, you know, uh, not killing each other yet. Did, didn't they? Yeah, exactly. Did, didn't they offer some kind of support group at your school? Or anything uh, like that no. Did. Did I they? missed school for about a for uh, about a week because I was with him in the hospital. Were you guys all at the same school? Yeah. Well, yeah, the school should offer something for people you, to help you were, process. You this. were with him in the hospital for a week and you missed school. Yeah. He's my best friend. It still seems weird that you, you know, I mean, I could see it going by after school kind of thing. It's weird that he was so into it and yet no one gave him any support. And where was his family and all this? Yeah. And look, it, it's noble to be by your friend's side. Yeah, of course. But I don't know, take, taking a week off school. And the school not intervening and helping out. I, mean, I, I don't get it. The major event went down at that school. Yeah. You want to ask those questions? No. All right. So what does Jake need to do? He needs to find a support group sometime where we can talk with him. He has a post-traumatic stress reaction. He, he's, he's sort of taken on all of his friend's stuff. Right. It's right. awful. Yeah. He's shouldering the whole burden. Angelica? Yeah, hey, what's up? Hey, you're 19. What's going on? I'm 17. All right. Jeez, run into a lot of that this week. All right. Um, I have a question about ecstasy. I heard that, um, okay, like, you know how the pills is what makes you happy or whatever, and you lose your serotonin, and that's what makes you happy? When no, you the, the cells that produce the serotonin die. They're just gone. Oh, well, I heard there's a stuff called 5-HTP that um, brings it back. Is no, that true? No, absolutely not. So what does that do? Cause it really doesn't do anything. It's the equivalent of trying to use it as an antidepressant. If you've killed off those cells, the only thing that will help it is, in fact, a pharmacologic agent. What is that 5-HTP? It's a it? precursor to serotonin. Where do you get it? A health food store, probably. 
So there's nothing that um, no. to get it, that back? It, it's no. Gone forever. Yes, there's medication. Yeah, it tends to be gone forever as far as we can tell. And oftentimes, the, the ecstasy users I deal with end up on medication. If they, if certainly, if they're having the, the kind of panic and difficulty going outside and socializing and the mood disturbances that are so, so characteristic of ecstasy, mm -hmm. they need to be on medication. So I'm pretty much screwed and I'm not getting none of that back. How many times done that ecstasy? Um, I've been doing it for about a year. I've done it probably like forty times. Yes, you, you well, you you might have, you might dodge the bullet. Sometimes people at forty times do, but you're gonna have something from it for sure. Mm -hmm. And you need to talk to a doctor about it who's used to dealing with people that have been exposed to a lot of this drug. It's it's a toxin. It it destroys brain. Mm -hmm. Like what kind of doctor? Because I've never been um, to like kind of therapist. Or many psychiatrists know how to do this. People that deal with drug and alcohol issues. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, hey, on. good times, so, though, right? You too. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah. Yeah. You're 16? Yeah. You uh, have a question about uh, pubic hair? Yeah. Lately, um, I've been finding clumps of pubic hair, fall, like, they fall out, and I find them in my underwear. And I, like, I, I haven't done anything differently, and it just started falling out lately. Pubes have been fall falling out in clumps? Yeah. So um, they look like uh, like patches of sod. <laughs> I I guess. What do you mean clumps? Yes, yeah, so I'm trying to figure out how how's there even enough to create. Is there a, a vagina attached to it? No, there, it's not. There's just like a lot, like a bunch of hairs. She's, it's not like just one. She's That's what I was sloughing her like. vagina. Is that what you're suggesting? What? Yeah, yeah, like a like a snake peels its skin off once a year. <laughs> huh? Is it so? Is it patchy? I mean, can you see that? Can you see the loss? Yeah. You can see the patchy hair loss. Yeah, you can tell. Is are you, are you? Hold on, I got a theory. Are you sure there's not an Asian woman pulling this off with a uh, waxed piece of paper? Because that's normally how it works down there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Yeah. Do you have a rash down there? Um, not really. No. It's, it's kind of red where it like where it fell out, but it goes away after like as, after like a day, kind of. Are you scratching a bunch? No. Is there any hair loss anywhere else in your body? No. And no other rash anywhere? No. Are you on any medication? Um, I was taking steroids. Corticosteroids? Anabolic. Anabolic steroids? Why? Trying to trying to make the football team? Um, no. Well, because I'm kind of small, and I don't know, me and my friends just took some of her brothers. Oh, my God. Her brother's on the juice, and you got into it, too? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. That's wow. That's why your pubes are falling out. Absolutely. That's what's doing it? Absolutely. Well, what what do you think? What, what do you think? Well, it wasn't doing it when I was taking them, and I stopped taking them, and then it started well, it, falling out. It increases your hair growth all over your body when you're taking them. How long did you take it for? Like three months. Oh, my God. Didn't, didn't uh, your friend's brother know you were getting into a supply? Um, well, he actually thought his other friend was taking them. Okay, screwball. Hey, listen, baby. You need to get some blood tests done. It can, it can damage your liver, your kidneys, and cause strokes and heart attack. You need to get this checked out, right? Okay. Cause high blood pressure. Your 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 own fertility could be in jeopardy here. There's a lot of stuff goes down with this stuff. Okay. All right. All right. Let's uh let's work on the decision making, Sarah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Don't do what, anything what, you want to do. All right. What we what really we <laughs> that's a good good plan for all of our callers for everybody all of you don't do anything you feel like doing. Well, I'm how not, tall are you that yeah, you're so we, small? What are you trying to accomplish? You want to get bigger. Yeah. But how uh, well, taller? Is that what you mean? Yeah. What's your height? Five three. All right. What what those things do is accelerate your growth for a short period of time and cause the growth plates to shut down, so you never achieve the goat growth you would have gotten to otherwise. Okay. Yeah. All right. You need to get seen about this. That's uh, ironic that it would uh, not yeah. only not help your growth, but it might helps stunt it, your growth. It, it stunts it. Yeah. It makes it. Oh my God. Hey. What is going on out there? I don't know, Drew. I'm just as bamboozled as you are. The Shut only up. difference is I don't care. Kiss my ass. <laughs> Jimmy. Hey. You're 17. Yeah. What's up? Um, about a two month, two and a half months ago, I uh, had sex with my girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, it was my first time, and I got so nervous that, like, I started shaking, and I lost my heart on. And, uh, you know, she stopped it at that point, about three minutes into it. And uh, ever since then, even when I've been in <laughs> She stopped the way her stop with that. Uh, how, did, how did she stop it? By taking the blood out of your penis? <laughs> yeah. 
and she got off me and said no. Well, she said no because there was nothing there. Well, that, but I mean, I got I got so scared. Like it was my first time. Right. And but, ever since uh, then, okay. every, every time I've been in a situation like that, I um e I lose my heart on. Even when I'm masturbating, I lose it. Like I have like almost like flashbacks, and I get nervous again. Post traumatic stress penis. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. You, well, you got to get back on that horse, Jimmy. Yeah, you need to find a way to deal with this anxiety. It's uh, anxiety makes things not work. Being nervous makes things not work. It's just nervousness. Oh yeah. And but but and, and, and here's what anxiety is to me. I mean, I mean, Drew, stop me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Anxiety. It'd be nice if it just made your your penis limp every time. And yeah. here's what I'm saying because. Then when you were public doing some public speaking, that's all that would happen. You'd have a limp penis, and that would probably yes. be better yes. than having an erection. Sure. But what anxiety does is it figures out the worst possible scenario and makes it come true. So if you're doing public speaking, it's not that you get a limp penis; it's that you get a stutter and you start sweating profusely about the yeah. forehead. You're a limp brain. You can't think. You lock. You've yeah, it even has physical manifestations. Sure, you're sure. you're holding up a card, uh, trying to read uh, you, the notes on your speech, and your hand is shaking visibly. The beads of sweat on the forehead, whatever whatever it is, even your walking yeah. becomes sort of unnatural. No, that's right. You so, do. and you're with when you're with a woman, then your penis goes to hell. When a cop pulls you over, you start stuttering. It seems like you're drunk. Uh -huh. what, 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 it, it is. It, it figures out what would be the worst possible thing your body could do at this particular point for whatever the occasion is, and that's what it gives you. Produces and that. that's what I don't understand, and that's why I'm an atheist. <laughs> what the hell would God punish his subjects? And I don't know if he considers us his subjects. Maybe it's his children. Why would he do this to his children? They at least have to be his subjects. You know what I mean? Why would he give you that flop sweat on your forehead? Why would he make you stutter? Why would he take the blood out of your penis? Why would he give you gas on on the first date. Why? Well, Anis is in my ear saying, explain fight or flight, which is just the fact that your these these hormones are, are... Hold on, Anderson, how dare you speak into his ear when I'm in the middle of one of my atheist tirades? That, that there are hormones that are there in response to really f frightening experiences, frightening stimuli that cause you to either stay and fight or to run, turn and run, that it, it charges the whole system up. Unfortunately, anxiety is when that response occurs and the things that shouldn't evoke that response. I know. The so sex you... shouldn't evoke that response. And that's what he's got to get over. He's got to either condition himself to be able to have sex without evoking that anxiety. Anxiety is kind of a behavior. So people can sort of deal with it behaviorally and then his penis will magically work if he's not being anxious. Or if he truly has some sort of phobic fixation, there may be something more needs to be done. All right. You know what? Uh, the thing about anxiety to me, it's like uh, when I get stoned, I like to eat a lot. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm doing great. I'll eat a ton and then I'll start thinking while I'm chewing, I wonder why I never bite my tongue. Ugh. And then I'll start thinking, I wonder where my tongue is right now while I'm chewing this Abba Zabba. Pow. And how is it not getting pow? That's when I come down on the tongue. <laughs> now, if I don't think about the tongue, I'm not going to bite the tongue. Yep. And it's the same with the anxiety and whatever. And it's the same with your penis. If you're caught up in the moment, you're rolling along, whether it's doing a doing a public speaking or nailing some stripper, everything's fine. The second you stop and go, where's my tongue? <laughs> Pow. Oh my God! I'm nailing a stripper. That's that's when we get you. All right. Uh, Where's your tongue? It's in uh, it's in the stripper's ass. Okay. We are going to take ourselves a little break, and then we'll be right back. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Our guest Jerry Cantrell has uh, joined us in the studio tonight. Jerry, uh, formerly of uh, Alice in Chains, and now is uh, doing his own solo thing. Degradation Trip is the name of the uh, CD. It is uh, currently out. It is doing uh, very well. And uh, on tour with uh, Nickelback, who was, uh, and Creed, by the way, both both uh, bands in here semi, semi recently, yes? Yeah. yeah, we just finished with Creed, I mean, uh, with Nickelback a couple of days ago, and we start with uh, Creed in a few days from now, Sunday, I believe, in, in North Carolina. We uh, have a bunch of. Uh, tour dates for uh, Jerry and uh, all that and uh, doing the uh, doing a solo thing. It says here that you did it uh, you record the album at uh, a &M Records 
It's a uh, it was the last haunted. The last record uh, to be made in that studio before it was changed to Hanson, I believe. Yeah. A and M over here in La Brea. Yeah, that was yeah. Chaplin's old place, right? I used, to, right? I used yeah. to paint. One of the first jobs I had at age uh, 18 was painting the uh, psych in the sound stage. You know, the thing they do all the videos in front of. Yeah. To paint it white. <laughs> I would I would paint it for Soul Train, which they were. Uh, oh. Still filming. I would paint it, uh, <laughs> paint it black. And and the thing about the psych is, it's the thing that sort of has no corners to it. It's kind of rounded off, so yeah. they would airbrush the sky on it and all that crap. That job sucks so <laughs> bad. So what? There's no. They're not making. It didn't, it didn't seem haunted when At I was time, working there. You probably thought it was the greatest thing that ever happened to you. Seven bucks an hour for painting. <laughs> uh, hey, we listen. Two years later, you that's, made it up to, to coffee cans and uh, yeah. crawl space. It's better than six dollars an hour for asbestos removal. Oh, nice. Oh, you yeah. did that too, didn't you? No, I didn't technically remove asbestos. I mean, not in any kind of protective gear or anything. I just, I just demoed out asbestos and didn't know it. Oh, I'm sure, man, uh, fair, man. fair point, fair uh, part of my construction. Porn? Career. What was that? No, I did no porn. <laughs> I did, I did no straight porn actually. <laughs> So uh, anyway, Jerry is uh, taking a little uh, little time off uh, as we speak, talking to him uh, during the break about uh, going to his dad's uh, ranch or his ranch and his dad's ranch in uh, Oklahoma. And uh, I mean, do you do you like uh, herd cattle and do all that stuff? We do all that stuff. Yeah, we've got about uh, eighty or ninety head of cattle, and we've been uh, actually raising uh, raising horses uh, probably for about four or five years now. We've got about seven or seventeen, eighteen horses now. I think starting from just a couple. Yeah. It. it uh, it's kind of. This is going to be weird, but there's some people who can do get animals to do stuff they don't want to do, and then there's an, there's the other breed that can't. Well, that's mostly in Europe. The, the, no, I don't mean. I don't mean. I don't mean while they're filming it. No, I mean like like you ever do. You, you know, you do a thing like I can't take a rabbit. You know, you like say, okay, take the rabbit out of the cage, hold the rabbit, right. and put it into the carrying cage right. to take it to the vet, and then the rabbit's back feet start flapping, and I throw the rabbit. Like I can't get animals to do kill stuff. The they wabbit, don't kill, kill the rabbit. Kill the And yet uh, the crocodile hunter can uh, right. have a conversation with a snake. Right. 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 I'm just saying I I couldn't do any of that branding. I couldn't do any right. of that uh, stuff where they cut the balls off, and put, the, <laughs> put the rubber bands yeah. around it until they fall That's off. That's crazy. My dad does all that stuff, and I've learned how to do that myself uh, too. It's uh, it's kind of bizarre, but uh, how, how much cattle rustling is going on in 2002 <laughs> that the branding is still necessary? Branding's really, it's not too necessary, but uh, you definitely still have to deal with, with. Uh, it's mostly like your cattle wandering on other people's property. And I stuff see, like that. I and see. It's getting mixed all, in with other herds. Not you know. all fence. Yeah. All right, so uh, Jerry Cantrell is here. We will uh, take some calls, give you some uh, dates, uh, play some music, and uh, do all of that. Let's well, talk to uh, Martha. Martha? Hi. You're 19? Yes. What's up? Uh, I was just wondering what are the effects of the uh, double shot? You won't get pregnant. Yeah, but like, like, will it make me gain weight or? Not usually. The, the most troubling thing that I find with this is it can make people depressed. Mm -hmm. And it can sort of shut down your sex drive. Oh, yeah? But it is, it has been attributed to have been the major cause of the drop in teen pregnancy rate in this country in the last couple of years. And so. when what, uh, what is that? I mean, how long is it good for? Three months or? Six? Three months. But, you know, now there's all this, con I bet the conference is going to come up about this because today the NIH put a study out about Provera and progesterone. You hear, you hear this at all? Yeah, I read that, sure. I mean, <laughs> who didn't? Well, it was a big, it was a headline. <laughs> it was headline, <laughs> it was read, I, I mean, headline it was, news every damn time. It was all television. over JAMA. <laughs> Every time they they turn on television, they were talking about it, and that is that the estrogen and progesterone replacement therapies that we've been, I, I still think are a good idea, but we've been using for a long time for menopausal women, increase the risk of stroke, increase the risk of heart disease, increase the risk of breast cancer in a big study. And so, oh, good. And they I, think it's the progesterone that might be doing it, and then Depo Provera is a, is a big dose of progesterone. Shouldn't we start trying to bring women down? You know, you know, everybody I know, their husband kicked off. Every one of my grandparents' friends, it's all the it's all the women are left You're behind. Right. We should be giving women things we should to make them die to... earlier. Right? Well, let, listen, hold <laughs> is that, on. Is that what no, you're saying? No, you misread me. I'm not saying kill women. I'm saying uh, right now, here's what happens. And I know Jerry's on board with this. Men marry women that are six, eight, ten years younger than they are, yeah. oftentimes. Uh -huh. Then then pay half the money to them when they get divorced, right? In in, in the next two years. That's yes. Right. And no, then? Then the guy kicks off ten years before the woman does. So really... 
The guy kicks off, and the woman's got another 20 years left. Easy. I'm right. trying to bridge that chasm. Yeah. <laughs> you wanna, yeah. I'm trying to bring you the women down. You don't want to make it so miserable, that lonely time at the end. Do you know yeah. how difficult it is for a woman to die alone, to be sitting in that big house, driving big house. the old man's car, spending his money, banging the pool man? Oh. You, know what kind of, you know what kind of pain that is, Drew? I'm saying if men can't come up, let's bring women down. Let's just bring them down. They're like 80 or 82 right now. Let's just bring them down. We'll meet them at 75. Okay? Okay. All right. All right. And is in a... Uh, I'll leave you with that one. What's Martha <laughs> doing over here? <laughs> Martha's doing <laughs> depo. She, what is she doing? I know, but we, we answer her question? Yeah, I believe so. All right. Josh? Yes, this is Josh. You're 25? So. Yeah. What's up? Hey, um, Jerry, your work on dirt, absolutely amazing. Thank you. Absolutely excellent. Um, two quick questions, if I may, mm -hmm. um, real quick. Uh, sure. One, um, the dollar store condoms, any difference between those and the leading national brand as far as... Um, you know, I would suggest you ch consult Consumer Reports online. I always stick with Trojans pretty Trojan much. Trojan and the uh, Ramseys uh, tend to be the best. And, yeah. and there are Consumer Reports does every few years a review of condom safety and, and yeah. efficacy and stuff. So all, all I know you pretty much always want to stay away from are the multicolored ones. Those tend to be less effective. Hey, right. hey, Josh, but they carry brand names. It's not anything. Not you know, anything that's a bargain generally is probably not the greatest quality in the world. And if you're talking about something that's going to prevent pregnancy and uh, disease, uh, you probably want to spend the dough and get the decent, the decent quality. quality. That's well. Yeah, there's a opinion. business in here. So should we get pie cut them and sell them for more? That would be my opinion. And, and line is brought to you by Trojan. Yeah, <laughs> Josh probably isn't getting laid so much. It's going to make. A big impact. I mean, what are we talking about? Three or four dollars a year difference between the buck forty nine stuff and the ninety nine cent. And, and I don't know when the last time either one of you spent any time in that ninety nine cent store, but it's crazy, man. Really, why? What they got there because I, I did a I did a man show bit there, and I was in one for like four hours, and it basically is it's sort of a refugee camp for things that didn't sell. You know, stuff <laughs> stuff is not produced to right. go in the ninety nine right. cent store. It's the island of misfit toys. Yeah. It's the cramp it's, it's a useless store. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, that, that yeah. Uh, plaster yeah. of Paris E. T. with the Prussian helmet that didn't move as yeah. well as they thought they would it would move right. ends up right. at the ninety nine cent store. It's all this crazy stuff that never sold in its original store, making it over to the 99 cent store. This wow. is why. So condoms... Maybe they're outdated or something. doesn't seem like condoms would be a great thing to buy there yeah. because it's like, well, we couldn't sell any of these ones with the gay flag on yeah. it at the uh, parade three years ago. Yeah. Let's drop them off here. We'll sell, we'll sell them for 99 cents. I'd stick cents. with your name and proven brands, you know. Hold Fair on, enough. Drew. Write that down. A condom with the gay flag on it. Huh? And sell it for more so people think they're getting better quality. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's talk to uh, Elizabeth. Hi. No, wait a minute. Uh, I think I want to hear a song from Jerry. All uh, right. All right, Elizabeth? Sure. Yeah, because we're running a little bit uh, behind tonight, and uh, I think that would be a better way to go. What do you oh, say, Oh, come on. Let her, let her hit it. Oh, don't worry. She'll be back. Uh, we, did, we didn't get rid of her or anything. All right. Well, well uh, hang on, Elizabeth. Yeah, we'll hear a song, and then uh, we'll come back and uh, talk to her. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. All right. This is uh, Jerry Cantrell, and this is called Anger Rising. Yay! <laughs> Jerry Cantrell's our guest tonight. Degradation Trip is the name of the CD. Jerry is uh, formerly of uh, Alice in Chains and uh, out on tour coming up uh, real soon in uh, probably less than a week, yes? Sunday, starting with Creed. Yeah, we just ended up with Nickelback two days ago. Starting Sunday with Creed and... Uh, no, I think that was short, Charlotte, North Carolina. Then going to uh -huh. uh, Columbus, Ohio and uh, Hartford and uh, Uniondale, New Jersey and Cincinnati and uh, Seattle and uh, all over the map. So uh, look for uh, Creed and Jerry in a town near you. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back after after this. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. We're back. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Dr. Drew over there. Adam over here. Jerry Cantrell is our guest tonight. Hello. Formerly of uh, Alice in Chains and uh, doing his own thing now. Degradation Trips, the name of the CD. It is out as uh, we speak and doing very well. He's going out uh, on tour with uh, Creed. Coming up in uh, on Sunday, and uh, is there a website or anything if people want to find Jerry that Cantrell dates? dot com. Jerry Cantrell dot com, and uh, look for uh, him coming to your city. Let's talk to uh, Elizabeth, who we were going to talk to right before we heard the song. Elizabeth, hi. hi. Hey, you hung on? Yes, I did. All right. What's up? You're 19. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a year ago, 
I had sex for the first time, and so far the only time. Um, it was protected sex, but I contracted both herpes and genital warts from the... In spite of wearing a condom? Wow. Yeah. No. Yes. So did it break? No. Wait a, wait a minute. Hmm. What? Doesn't, doesn't jive for doesn't you? Doesn't jive for me. How, how, do, how are those things documented? How do you know that's what you have? Um, both symptomatics, appearance-wise, and um, antibody tests, and also biopsies done for the HPV. Okay, the HPV I can get. That makes sense. But uh, That's the warts. Yeah, but the herpes, the, the antibody tests are not very good. The only way they can really diagnose that is by... With Western blot was the test. No, that's no good. The only way they can really do it, no, is with cultures. They have to culture the lesions. Well, but she had a breakout, right? Did you have a breakout, Elizabeth? Yeah, I've had lots. It's been really horrible. You've had had pre pre yeah. recurrent herpes since. Yeah. Not just the warts. Right. All right. And did, did you have? Did you have oral sex with him or something? No. Wow, this doesn't make sense. Well, Drew, you say all the time that uh, the uh, herpes and the warts cannot be on they, the area that the yeah, condoms are. They on. can. They can, but it's awfully. You know, that's a that's a bad uh, penis hand you got yeah. dealt your first uh, your first time out of the gate there, Elizabeth. I know. <laughs> how do you, <laughs> how do your recurrent outbreaks manifest? It's rough. I mean, it's one been really time. Hard. It's been really horrible. Actually, the whole situation was also a lot worse. I also right. suffered a vaginal tear from it, so I had to get stitches from that and a blood transfusion. Damn, a blood transfusion. Hmm. You mean you bled so much you needed a transfusion? Yes. From the tear? Yes. Were you raped? No. This does not does there's not something compute. Up here. All right, compute. Elizabeth, we're not saying you're making this up, but we're no, saying that there's just, something going I on wish here. I we're making this up. I really don't like. This. How did the tear? I mean, even after people tear all the way through their rectum after delivering. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't that bad. I mean. Uh, no, but I, listen. Let's say you're delivering a baby and you tore the vagina, the rectum. You wouldn't bleed to the point of needing a transfusion. Well, what happened was when I went to the emergency room, they didn't believe me because I, I. What had happened was I was losing. So, many, so much blood and like blood clots that they thought from where? Actually, that they thought that I had had like a spontaneous abortion. They said so they didn't repair it for a long time, <clears throat> which of course I couldn't have had since I had never had sex. With and you had a tear inside your vagina, up inside. Yeah. So you're not talking. We were talking about something on the outside before. No, no. Wow. This guy is a he's a real uh, demolition team. This guy. Yeah. This guy. We should we should tag this guy. We need, we need to keep an eye on him. So he's got a can opener for a penis. He's spreading disease everywhere. Well, you never had a uh, like a dissociative disorder or anything? No. Why do you ask? Just uh, it just seems like a lot. Nothing. Nothing. No trauma in your life. No, never. Nobody. Uh, nobody ever abused you, huh? No, I had an eating disorder when I was younger, but that's pretty common. I know. So. All right. And why? Why uh, are, are you? Why you waited a while before you lost your virginity? Yeah. Just uh, a personal choice? I guess, yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, now you're a little reluctant about getting back in a relationship? Well, yeah. I don't see how it would even be possible for me to. I mean, because it's just so cont contagious and I'm well, afraid of even telling someone. Well, basically, 30 of your friends have the wart virus, at least, okay? So that's very common. And the herpes, I still, I still have a hard time buying that you got both. Well, they said that because I was so immune compromised because of the blood loss and the stress and everything, that that's probably why. No, they well, you were you were losing blood before you had sex with this guy. And no, that, no. So how did you get immune compromised going into this? Well, no, they would, didn't say going into it, but I mean after is what they said. That's why everything was so bad. Okay, and, and how do your out outbreaks manifest now? The herpes. Everything's really bad. How do they manifest? Uh, just like general inflammation and just like pain, real sharp pain, like my lower back going down my legs. All right, no. Drew, we're not going to be able to sort this out in two minutes, so here's the deal. But this is not this is not coming together for me properly. I, I think you should be reevaluated, maybe by just get another opinion about this, because uh, I think your belief about what's going on here may be over and overdone, over dramatized. The wart virus, I get that, I understand that. A tear from the penetration of his penis to the point that you hemorrhage doesn't fit. Uh, and there may have been something else going on up there that, that got stimulated a hemorrhage, and that needs to be sorted out, and that needs to be diagnosed properly. And this thing that's being called herpes, I question. Well, let me explain where I would fit into this if I was 19 or 20. I would be the next guy who came around yeah, right. and could not figure out why she was sobbing and crying when I went for her bra. 
and couldn't figure anything out. So, uh, Elizabeth, of course, maybe, you, you'd stop immediately. Uh, that's me, yes, yeah. because yeah. I'm like Sir, Sir Walter, Walter Raleigh. Raleigh. But uh, uh, little therapy probably couldn't hurt either. Yes, yes. her situation. Yeah, sounded yeah. like there were some uh, issues going on. Oh there. yes, Jesse. Yeah. You're 19. I am. You had a baby three months ago. Uh huh. And uh, uh, yes. Oh, I was just wondering. Um, I uh, before I got pregnant, I was. Um, me and my boyfriend had sex all the time, and then while I was pregnant, we had sex all the time, and um, now after the baby was born, I'm just less all the interested. Time? Oh, I see. I'm so less interested in sex, and it hurts, and it. That's normal. Sometime, are you breastfeeding still? Uh, yes. Okay, that. that... Uh, every once in a while, I'm like at night time. You're breastfeeding. I breastfeed. And All right. Well, that that can add to this, and uh, this, the massive hormonal changes that women go through after delivery very often set this kind of thing up. Talk to your doctor about it. Sometimes something as simple as going back on the birth control pill can kind of reestablish your hormonal environment, and you start that we'll have interest in sex again. Also, I got put. I got put on the shot. Oh, okay. oh well, that's what's ju- that's what's shutting you down. down. That shuts you down. Hey, okay, Jesse? Jesse, that's shutting you down. All right, you gonna marry this guy? Um. I, I think about it sometimes. Okay. All right. Maybe after the fifth kid? Maybe after the fifth kid. All right. Kid. No more kids, right? You're 19. I'm 19. No more kids. All right, baby. All right. Okay. So check into the shot, all right? The shot's doing, the shot's shutting you down, all right? Yeah. It is. And, and the stress of having a baby and those changes. Okay. Jerry Cantrell's our guest tonight. We're going to take ourselves a uh, quick break, and we'll be uh, right back with more of you after this. <laughs> Everybody, it's Loveline. We're back. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Jerry Cantrell's our guest tonight. You know him formerly from uh, Alice in Chains, and uh, now Degradation Trip, name of the new uh, CD. Going to be out with uh, Creed. Finished up with uh, Nickelback, and uh, starting the tour come Sunday, and uh, coming to a town near you. JerryCantrell dot com. Is what you uh, go on now today? Or Roadrunner Records, which is my new label. Yeah. Or Roadrunner Records dot com. Yeah, I believe it's Roadrunner Records dot com. Yeah. Did you uh, now? You got your name. Did uh, Did you have to buy it back from some jackass who uh, <laughs> bought it, or how did that work? Actually, uh, my whole leaving uh, Columbia, uh, uh, the record company that I've been before, it was a really, really amicable thing. It was very cool. And uh, the, well, they had it. They had the dot com. Yeah, actually, actually, yeah, that that, that was part of it was because because actually, uh, while Alice was going on, uh, I had already started with a solo record uh, in 1998. So Augie Depot actually was my first record. So this is actually my second. And. Uh, but uh, they've they've been very cool. They were cool. They were very supportive and great uh, through all the years with Alice and and uh, with my first record and with leaving. That's like a rarity in this this day and age in this business to to leave as cleanly and as as uh, cool as we are with each other. Yeah. That's kind of nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it was good. It was you good. never hear that story, uh, especially with the, the music, big yeah. labels, yeah. the music, and the man. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's uh, talk to uh, Heather. Is twenty eight, Heather? Hi, I actually have two really quick questions. Uh, okay. Okay, first one is sometimes when I'm having sex with my boyfriend, I pass out. Wow, that's pretty good, huh? Yeah. Do you hyperventilate and then I've pass out? I've had chicks fall asleep, but I don't think technically they pass out. Well, it's a kind of passing out, but I don't think that's what she's talking about. Do you hyperventilate? Um, I, I, I breathe hard. Do you get I ting- don't think I'm hyperventilating. <laughs> you get tingling in your hands and around your mouth? Oh, it's, 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 it's comedy there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no. Well, when I come to, I always have to take a big, deep breath in. But when, you, when you hyperventilate, you don't really know you're hyperventilating, do you? Does your heart... Yeah, right. That's true. Do you, does, your, does your heart race? Well, yeah. Uh, does the second part of your question relate to the first part? No. Okay. Well, Heather, look. The, the, it's not uncommon for someone to pass out from hyperventilating for, during sex, but it also can be a sign of a real serious heart condition. Okay. So it's something that does need to be talked about with a doctor just to make sure it's not something more serious, okay? Okay. All right. The reason you're passing out is usually because there's no blood going to your head, and there are reasons for that. Okay. Does He doesn't stop, though, does he, just because you've passed out? Yeah, he does. Oh, he does? Yeah. All right. He's, a, he's, he's a keeper. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> most guys mean, uh, for most guys, that means oral. <laughs> All right, so uh, 
or anal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> I'm uh, just kidding. <laughs> All right, Heather. So uh, this guy's a keeper. That's one uh, wh question. What does he do when you pass out? Well, at first he usually just freaks out, and then. Are you standing <laughs> up? And, are you lying down? Do you stand up and fall down? That kind of thing, or? Depending on the position. So you've fallen too. Yeah. Wow. Oh, tell. What's That's, he saying? What? Put him on. Let me speak to this All man right. with this uh, <laughs> with this sedative for a penis. What's up, Adam? <laughs> hey. <laughs> wow. Listen, uh, Valium Penis. What's your name, Valium Penis? <laughs> My name is Paul. We met a long time ago on a Jenna shoot. Oh, really? Jenna Jameson? Yeah. <laughs> what are you, in the, you're in the porn industry? Not anymore. Oh. What was I doing? You were down there as, uh, you are down there Day as Extra. Oh, right. I went down there for the morning show and uh, watched yeah. a uh, porno yeah. shoot once. It was like 140 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. I remember another, that. I'm also another graduate of North Hollywood High School. Oh, you poor bastard. Tell me about it. Well, uh, look at you. You've gone on to bigger and better things. Yeah, I'm a chef now. Go figure. Yeah, you're knocking people <laughs> out. With so what are you penis. doing to this woman? It's just normal stuff. Hmm. Just, after a while, I, I think I think it has to do with a control problem, actually. No, 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 she no. Does, she, she doesn't want to let go, and instead of... You know, having a screaming orgasm or something like that, she just passes out. No. Mm -mm. It's a convenient and interesting yeah. hypothesis. But no. The no. reason she's she, she's about to have an orgasm, but instead she chooses the coward's way and passes yeah. out. The, yeah. reason, the reason she doesn't have the orgasm is because she can't. Oh, uh, really? Not all women can during intercourse. And you've obviously stimulated her to a point that her vagus nerve kicks in and slows her heart down and shuts her whole system down. Can it's she not necessarily a good sign. Can she have one uh, during uh, oral sex? She's passed out then, too. Wow. Hmm. She's got the yeah. tongue and the penis. Jenna has taught me a lot. <laughs> no kidding. Now, what were you doing on those porno sets? Uh, I started out as PA, and when I was done, I was a production manager. Wow, you really uh, worked yourself up that porn ladder. Yeah. Yeah, it's ambition, brother. <laughs> All right, I like that moxie. Uh, okay, so she's got to see a doctor because she might have some kind of heart condition. Oh, great. All right. Yeah. And uh, you should see a therapist. <laughs> Why should I see a therapist? Just because of that harebrained idea, of that, that grandiose idea you had about uh, her holding back her orgasm and passing out instead. I'm not, the, I'm not the only one that's happened with. Hang on. She had another question, though. She's had that? Yeah, she does, which yeah. is also a, a very important medical thing. All right. Thing. Let's go. Let's ask. Okay. Hold on. I'm oh, giving her back? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, yeah go ahead. The second question. We're all here. Okay. I have... The second question is, I've developed a lump in, like, um, just off to the left of my clitoris, in between the clitoris and the uh, urethra. In between okay, the clitoris and the urethra? Yeah, it's in the vagina. It's probably a, a Bartholin cyst, something like that. Th th those are, they're glands in that area can get cystic. It's not uncommon. How many feet between the clitoris and the urethra? Well, I want to get my, my No, I don't want to see. I don't want to see the book. You know, Yay. that ruins the masturbation Yay session much. for me. About, so about three quarters about of an it? inch? It, it, inch. it goes away. It, it, like, gets larger and then goes away. Yeah, it's a, it's a cyst. One of the glands is getting cystic in there. Okay. So what, 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 what did you do? Then? Uh, do you, when was your last pap smear? Uh, last time a month ago. Uh, and they didn't see anything or wasn't concerned about anything? Well, it, it was there and I told them about it, but I, they didn't tell me anything yeah, about it. Yeah, it's nothing. Don't, don't worry about it. There, there are cysts and the glands that are not uncommon in that area. Okay. Well, all right. Oh, he's ordering a cheeseburger. Do I need medication? Hold Wait, on. Hang on a second. It's quiet. What's your boyfriend ordering? He's ordering a cheeseburger? <laughs> yeah. Here, here's a funnier thing to do. Where is he? Hold on. Wait, no, where are you guys? Uh, no. Where are you guys? They're in the drive-thru. In and out in what in what part of Pasadena? <laughs> um, the east side. <laughs> east side over by Rosemead? Huh? Over. Near Rosemead, yeah. Okay. People honk there that see uh, Heather and, her, and what's his boyfriend's name? <laughs> I don't know. Ordering an in and out there. All right, good times. Yeah, Drew's a Pasadenaite, so uh, he knows the... Uh, I love in and out I just don't like the part where they have that whole secret language that I don't know about, so I feel like I'm getting gypped. Like, if you go to in and out you can give him a signal. Like, you can say to the guy behind the counter, Jerry, you ever eaten the in and out burger? Uh, I like the in and out without the grilled bun and with the grilled onions, it's, of course. Uh, yes. it's, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's a delightful place to, yeah. uh, to yeah. put away a burger, but the point is, is... 
<laughs> you can go in there and ask for you can ask for like uh, the Savage Burger or the you give the guy a the certain code. signal you yeah. give him the code and yeah. all of a sudden you right. get you get five patties right, right. and seventy pieces of cheese right, right. and they get a bunch there's a whole bunch of stuff that's not on the menu that the guys understand that I don't understand that I don't like because I feel like I'm not getting it I'm Left not in the out. club yeah right. Right. yeah animal. It, yeah, the animal, right. right? Yeah, there's, there's. I mean, we're giving too much away, but uh, I got to get some kind of little laminate card right. for in and out so I can go over there and right. get the uh, get my due. Eddie, Uh yeah, you're 22, right? What's up? Uh, I've been with my girlfriend for about three years, and we've been having sex for the last two years, and I. Poor Eddie's, Eddie's asleep. He's been on hold for a hundred minutes. Ninety-one minutes over here. Yeah. Uh, it, well, it's pretty important to me. I recently found out that about half the time that we've been having sex, she's really been... She's loud in bed, and she's been just... It's all been... Uh, for half the time, she's been just pretending she's liking it. She's faking her orgasm? Well, the thing is, well... Well, not that, Adam. Wait, now, wait, wait. Don't jump to conclusions here, buddy. Yeah, she's, she's never, pre she's, pretending. She's never had an orgasm, she says, so she doesn't know how to fake one, but, you know, she breathes and she screams and all that. I kinds love of this, stuff. Eddie's logic. Yeah. She's never had one, so she can't actually fake one, right. technically. Cause it's never, like yeah. saying, hey, I'm doing a movie where I'm supposed to get shot, but it, since I've never been shot, okay. I couldn't possibly act that part out. No, you clutch your bell and you fall over. Everyone thinks you got shot. That's how it works. Well, she's faking her orgasm. So where are you going with this? The reason I think it is is because she's just about as tall as me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's all about height. Hold on. Let me get my scratch pad out because this may be a keeper. She's about 5'10". Yeah. And oh, well. figuring she's just a little bigger than usual, most girls down there. Okay. I, right. I'm sure they're not all the same size. And the reason why is because sometimes when I go inside her, I can hardly feel anything myself. Mm -hmm. And I was her first. So, so you feel that she can't have an orgasm because her vagina is too large. Right. But not because you're too small. <laughs> well, I've never, I mean... There's well, a, he's a, never actually a large... experienced a big penis, so you got to understand, they may not be able to experience a small Well, you know, when a woman is rangy, yeah. her vagina grows. It's Eddie, you got it rangy. all wrong, buddy. Yeah. Rangy. You're 22, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. You no, a small no, penis, I'm you not, fag. True, I mean, please. I'm not... I'm, I don't think I'm big. I mean, Eddie, Eddie, I Eddie. Most I've never had a problem with it. But okay. is it when you go Listen in or me. when you go in or is it like ringing that dinner triangle? I mean, is it that kind of no, space no, no, around no, it? No, 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 it's not. No, <laughs> no. it's just it, it, it's just not. Cookie would be the ring of the bell, right? right. Cookie is it? This is not tight. And uh, another thing is, she gets extremely moist. Out okay. There. Well, so she's she's, she's excited. She's That's, That's good. Not a bad thing. That's Come good. on. Well, but she hasn't. When was this revelation come out that she wasn't enjoying it? When did she tell you this? Uh, about two, three weeks ago. How did it come out? And since how did it come out? Yeah. I well, I, we were just talking about it. We're pretty open with each other. Oh yeah, I can tell. How long has she been faking it? <laughs> for ha half the time we've been doing it for How the last two years. Two years. Very open. Let me Very clarify open. this. Coming. He told her her ass was getting big and she shot back with the fake <laughs> No, on the contrary. Two years of faking, she's pissed. Oh, you know yeah. how that goes. Well, she's still okay with it. Okay. Evidently, I mean. Do you give her oral sex? Yeah, lots of it. And right, well, that's how she's also. When I'm giving her oral sex and she's about to climax, mm -hmm. she stops because she's, she says it feels like someone's tickling her. Yeah. Yeah. And she just wants him to stop. Okay. Uh -huh. This is this is common stuff with uh how old is she? She's twenty one. Fourteen. Twenty one. Yeah. Okay, here here's here's the thing, Eddie. Women can enjoy sex even if they can't have an orgasm. Hard for men to understand. R right? Can you get that? Well No. The thing can't. is she says she's not enjoying it. Oh. Uh oh. And she she may be angry now. And uh you know, women well, that height often are, oftentimes are angry, Eddie. <laughs> uh, so is the relationship falling apart? No, 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 definitely not. The, my qu what I would like to know is if there's anything out there where I can maybe use some sort of enlargement to. No, no, forget that. Forget about your penis. This has nothing yeah. to do with your penis. Nothing. Zero. It's, it's She's never brought herself to orgasm at all. 
Well, I've we've talked about it, and she says she tried it once, but she felt strange. Yeah, this has nothing. Mm. Get this through your head. Nothing to do with your penis. It's all your balls, Eddie. <laughs> Blame your balls. Now, Eddie, here's here's what you have to do. Here's what women love. They love it when you listen or at least pretend to listen. So you you have to do a lot of listening. Don't fixate on yourself. Don't make giving her an orgasm the end all and be all and it's some sort of mission you have to accomplish because it puts too much pressure on her and it freaks her out and then she tries to fake it, then she gets angry at you. Right. She, just just relax a little. She's, she told me, as a matter of fact, she told me herself that maybe it's because she concentrates too much on trying to that, have that's, that's probably a big part it. of it. That and you're maybe a little too vigorous with the oral sex. Maybe, maybe lighten up a little bit. Maybe there, but. she could get uh, maybe she could do a little experimenting in the tub. That yeah. seems to work with yeah. a lot of ladies yeah. with the water. Maybe yeah. she gets herself a vibrator. I think my advice would be have her try to work herself out a little bit. Yeah. Figure herself out yes. a little bit. And then you get worked back into the equation. All right. All right. There you go. John. Hello? Hey, you're 20. What's up? Uh, yeah, I just thought I had a couple questions for Drew. I wanted to know what uh, college he attended, uh, what medical school he advanced to afterwards, and uh, how early I should study for the MCAT. Well, I went to Amherst College, and then I went to SC Medical School. Okay. And the MCAT, uh, back in the day, uh, mm -hmm. it wasn't something you studied for. What does the MCAT stand for? Medical, what, college admission test? Mm -hmm. well, sounds good. And uh, so I don't know what the... <laughs> I, I remember doing a you know, one of those pre preparatory classes. It was yeah, they have they have some at uh, UC Berkeley. I remember doing one that was completely worthless. Oh, yeah? Uh, in, in in the day. It's long, you know, it was 20 plus years ago we're talking about. So I, and now, I, I, as I understand these kinds of tests, everyone does the preparation. Mm -hmm. So you have to sort of to get into the... Yeah, up with the that, pack, you have to do the yeah, same thing everyone else does. Does that is that kind of cheating? I mean, they, I I don't know about MCAT, but I know they have all this SAT. Yep. I never took the SATs, but I know they have that thing where they prepare you. Yeah. And then it doesn't become a very good gauge as to yeah. how you would do on of the course. test when you prepare to take the test. Of course, John. The most important thing is where you go to college and how you perform there. That's really that's those are the important issues. Uh, can I have one more question as well? Yeah. Um. How does the physician's life affect the family's life when you have kids and everything when you get older? Well, it's pretty massive. Uh, uh, one thing I would discourage you from doing is having, getting married or expecting a relationship to survive medical school and residency because very few, I, I can't think of, no, none did from my medical school class. And uh, the early years, you're, you know, you're in the hospital 100 to 150 hours a week. And so it's very hard to be involved in childhood. That's heavy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's you know it, it it's tough. Uh, make your choices of what special you want to get into based on your priorities in life. Yeah, there's also people uh, schooling me to some uh, getting into like toxicologists because I like to study drugs on the body as well. All right, all right. Well, go ahead and you, do what you, you want to do. You know, yeah. you know, you know, if you're interested in the stuff. Keep going. Keep, keep all right. going, John. All right, John. Good all times right. there. So, uh, Doctor Drew is a bit of a role model for you. So yeah, right. right? No, uh, <laughs> evidently not. <laughs> John, I don't know if you can make it in. Where are you from? Like Brooklyn or something? I'm not. I'm from uh, Queens Village. Yeah. But yeah. on the East Coast, it's a lot more harder school-wise than over here. Th that's right, but the medical schools know that. And that's why the people on the schools in the East Coast have better placement. Yeah, but I, I'm keeping up with the Asians around here, so I think <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Well, any time you can keep up with the uh, with the uh, Lees and the Okamoras, you know, <laughs> you're doing well. All right, thanks a lot. All right. All right, John. Yeah. We should get rid of that keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah, there's no Joneses anymore. No, no. I think we're going to have to, uh, I think we have to change that, give it an Asian name. Keep up with the Yamasakis. Well, that, Eric? Would, I, would, would you go Japanese? I would, yeah. Uh, maybe split the difference, go Korean. No, no, no. That's that's too, it's a confusing last name, the Korean. I, I'd say, you know, the Asians, they work very hard. Keeping up with they the Kims. well in school. <laughs> keeping up with the Kims? Yeah, but people are going to get confused. They're going to think that's a first name. They're going to think about Little Kim. I would say Chinese. Okay. All right. Keeping up with the Lees? Mm hmm That sounds we're mi like we're mispronouncing something. <laughs> Eric? Hey. You're 23? Yeah. What's up? Uh, yeah, I need your guys' help. Um, I guess about a month and a half ago, I got in this really serious car accident. Um, my car was told I was almost killed, but I actually walked out not too badly injured. Um, and it seems like, I don't know if this is a cause and effect relationship or what, but it seems like since then, I've been completely obsessed with sex. Like, uh, I mean, like five people a week, like random anonymous. Wait a minute, I, I almost killed but walked away 
Well, well, I mean, what did you say? I guess what I mean is that if I was sitting in any other seat in the car, I would have been killed. But in the driver's seat, I was okay. All right. So if you were if you were in England, you'd be dead. <laughs> is that what you're saying? Yeah. And, Basically. And yeah. are you gay? Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. And uh, so, have you been sexually compulsive at some other time in your life? No, I mean, not that, not like this. This is almost ridiculous. I mean, I have friends who are like this, and I always kind of frowned on it. I kind of thought it was, I mean, based on the fact that there's diseases in the population. Yeah, okay, okay. Are you otherwise addictively prone, do you think? <sighs> not really. I mean, I don't drink or do any drugs. I mean, I don't see but it. Do you, but do you think you have the gene? Now. Is it in your family system? Addiction? No, maybe slightly obsessiveness, I would say, but not addiction. I don't know if they're separate things. But, hey, Eric, are you, are you saying at this point the Miata is totaled? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's complete right off. It wasn't a Miata. Oh, you just... It was totaled, yeah. I mean, it, it was crushed. It rolled over. I mean, it was... You just, the only thing you could say was the uh, Leopards Can See covers. Well, are you, do you think you're trying to manage some feelings that are sort of overwhelming you at this point? I mean, that's what I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if it's... Like, I have this, this attribution of the arousal to anxiety from the accident is being channeled into some sex drive. Well, 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 basically. What, what yeah. about this? What about when people have a near-death experience? It makes them realize that life is short and they need to live. And Yeah, and there is that. But he, he's telling us something different. He's doing things that, that upset him. You'd rather slow it down and he can't stop. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's a couple things that occur to me. One is maybe you had a head injury and didn't know it. Is that possible? As a part I of it? I had I had my head lightly on the roof of the car. Yeah, because there are brain injuries that are associated commonly with hypersexuality, number one. And then number two, were, maybe you were traumatized at some other time of your life, and this sort of re, you know, surfaced some of these uh, yeah. trauma issues, and this is how you're managing it, is manifesting with this compulsive sexuality. So the odd thing is, my, I guess my friends are kind of like this. Which, I mean, they, they're, the way they that response is like, oh, you're finally acting your age, you're finally acting normal. Well, <laughs> you, 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 were, were you traumatized uh, at some point in your life earlier? No. No. <laughs> I'm one of the callers who hasn't been started. Really? Yeah, all right. Oh, shocking. Yeah, we're a little disappointed that <laughs> someone hasn't been raped or abused. <laughs> but all right, Eric, we'll let you slide. Uh, here, you know... Now, if you're gay and you're young and you're male, you can pretty much go out and get some ass five nights a week, right? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's, I mean that, that's you know, you know, when we uh, we figured out you're gay is when you said you. Uh, five I, nights, I think you said yeah. fantastic at some point, which may have <laughs> tipped it. But you also said you're heading out five exactly. nights a week so, so getting laid. Wonderful choice. And wonderful mo choice. Most twenty-three-year-old guys who are hetero cannot go out and get themselves some ass five nights a week unless they're paying. <laughs> We've for never it. met that guy, especially without a car. All right, so uh, Eric, well, you know what you're doing, right? It's just it's a thought that's constantly in my head that I can't. I don't understand why I can't get rid of it. Right. I, I recognize the misattribution of arousal, whatever yeah. logical things that are happening, but I can't stop. Them. All right, so, so so you have the insight, but you can't experientially get in touch with what's going on. If you want to do something about that, see someone about it, or maybe this is an expression of some addiction that you didn't know you had, and. Again, people who are addictively prone, they will go down these paths when they have overwhelming feelings they're trying to manage. All right, let's, uh, before we go to break, take a uh, call for Jerry. Marcella? Uh, Adam? You're 21? Yeah. What's uh, up? Such a huge fan. I can't believe I'm on. Oh, my Great. gosh. How are you? I'm good. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> What's your question? Uh... You know, Allison Teens has these songs like Fat Girls and Football, and I was wondering if they ever going to get released and stuff. You know, actually, uh, uh, Lane had a version of Allison Chains before we kind of got together, which was called Alice in Chains, like Guns N' Roses. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, interesting. And, and it was, uh, it was, it was very much glam based, and that's what the song she's talking about. One of the songs was Fat Girls, another one is Football. I can't even remember the rest. And of how long? Can you remember the rest of the songs on that demo? It was like a four-song demo. Uh huh. What? Well, can, can you tell me what those titles were? 
Oh, I can't remember. Well, now. there you go. Well, anyway, regardless, uh, you know, I, 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 I imagine you could probably find them on some sort of a, you know, a, a bootleg list on the computer somewhere. Would they ever come out with a special release? Oh, not. Things? Well, I mean, it, it, they, that really had nothing to do with with the band that we were. So, different people, different yeah, people. completely before us. So, uh, I mean, but I'm sure, I'm sure that uh, you know, we 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 did fairly well. So, I mean, uh, I know, I know that the version of Alice in Chains that uh, that I was a part of, uh, we've got like. 40 plus bootlegs if i mean probably more than that really? right now but uh I've, yeah but you can find it out there somewhere how long was alice in chains around <laughs> before alice in chains was around uh actually uh, i think they were around for about a year and a half and, oh uh, so it wasn't wasn't a real long time no it wasn't a real long time and actually uh uh, uh that kind of started to fall apart uh for Lane when I met him and I was looking to form a band so uh, he was kind of moving into into a different area I actually played with that band on a couple of gigs in exchange for Lane to sing for my band which became oh, really? Boston Chains yeah, in, later on so. but you're not from the Seattle area correct? I'm about 30 miles south Tacoma oh, cool. yeah. so did you go into then Seattle to sort of uh, find your your fame and fortune pretty or much. how did that work? pretty much I grew up uh, I grew up in Tacoma I actually span away a, a town a suburb of of of, uh, mm. of Tacoma, and uh, my mother and my grandmother passed away pretty close together to each other. How were you? And I was 21. Mm. So um, at mm. that point, I was pretty committed to what I wanted to do. And at that at that time of like losing my parental figures, there was really all the cords were kind of cut. So huh. uh, it was kind of like on my own. And I that was the next place to jump for me. The next pond to move up to was Seattle. I mean, I'd already kind of conquered my little home huh. town of my own. Yeah, little, with, as, a, as a musician. Yeah, and as a musician, you know, I mean, uh, you know, my 19 year old spandex band or whatever. <laughs> I'd kind of done my thing in that town, and it was it's time to move it to another another level. So I actually went up and uh, met Lane uh, at a at a party and uh, and uh, we started we hit it off that night. And actually he had a job at a at a rehearsal hall called the Music Bank, which is what we called our uh, our our box set right. actually. And uh, uh, I ended up like moving in with him and kind of doing double duty playing guitar with him and his his new band and uh, having him play uh, uh, sing sing in my band until he got kind of tired and we convinced him that we were a better thing to do and and that's how that all happened uh, and, and then how long before things really started happening for Alice in Chains it seemed like this started happening right right away we were together for about two weeks when we had our first gig we played Kane Hall in the University of Washington campus and uh, we had about I think we had two original songs <laughs> in two weeks of time wow. of knowing each other and uh, some guy came down and said uh, can you guys do 40 minutes and we're like yeah sure so you know we're totally you know BSing them and and uh, we go up and do the show anyway and play like 19 minutes you know a couple of covers we play like a Hanoi Rocks tune a David Bowie tune and two of our own you know and and went off but that was, things just started to happen right off the bat you know and uh, it was a really quick thing we worked for a couple of years in our hometown and then it, uh, we became part of uh, a lot of other great bands that were happening at that time and it just kind of kept. You know, cycle, well, I like cycling. the. Uh, by the way, we've heard it millions and t millions of times. It's almost cliche on the show that uh, all the years of struggle and hard knocks. I, I kind of. It's refreshing to hear the. Uh, I think it's about ten to fourteen days to really cash in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that story. It gives me hope. Locally, uh, it did. Yeah, it took. It took. Didn't take too long for us to kind of hit it. All right, let's uh, take ourselves a little break. Jerry Cantrell is here. As you know, uh, formerly of uh, Alice in Chains, got a new CD out, got a new tour coming out, and uh, we'll be right back after this. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Drew. Jerry Cantrell Jerry. has uh, joined us tonight, formerly of Alice in Chains. Degradation Trip is the name of the new CD. It is uh, currently out. And uh, go to jerrycantrell.com and uh, find out all the information about uh, the tour that's uh, starting up uh, this Sunday with uh, Creed and uh, going oh, all Road around. Run, Roadrunner Records. RoadrunnerRecords.com, yeah. too. You can yeah. also find the information out on it, and that's uh, going out nationwide starting on Sunday. Yep. And let's get back to it and talk to uh, Jennifer. It's 22. Jennifer? Hello there. What's up? Um, it's kind of a weird predicament. About three years ago, I started dating my boyfriend, and we were in a long-distance relationship. And when I go and visit him, the sex was great, everything was fine. And then about a year ago, I was out there for two months. And I don't know if for some weird reason he grew bigger when I was gone or what the deal was. But <laughs> really painful. I know, I know that's weird. But just 
it's just painful. Like, it's not even... I can't even get it in. It doesn't even go in and feel right. And whenever I can get it in, it just it feels weird. I've gone to the doctor. I've explained everything to them. I've told them that I have absolutely no desire anymore for sex, and that's really the truth. And, and what do they tell you is a possible cause? They don't really. I mean, they've checked me for any kind of, you know, diseases or not that, but like vaginitis and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And the only thing they said is... Um, like maybe go to a kind of college or whatever and I've never made that step before but they never even possibly suggest it could be you know something wrong with the shape or whatever it well, is who were you so seeing wrong. what kind of doctor were you seeing um just a general physician all right it's time definitely time to see a gynecologist I mean that that is absurd not to you're having a, a very significant symptoms that are making a, a, a you know sort of putting your relationship in jeopardy that of course you get further evaluation is there any emotional stuff going on while you guys are apart no and i'm trying to think of you know any possible things all the time but did you start a new birth con sense. did you start a new medication or birth control pill around that time no, i was on it for um two years so same pill so that's a whole year same pill yes what pill are you taking um ortho tricycline yeah and I was thinking of getting off of it now. Just I don't know if it could possibly change after it, you know a it year. Can. It can. It can. That's a possibility. And no other medication. Nothing. Think about it. nothing no. for no antibiotics for acne or anything crazy like that. Nothing. I did have antibiotics, but it was like the oh, year prior. Grew, I a couple of times, but. All right, but but wait a second. He, his penis didn't grow. Right. I I know. Well, at least I, I hope it didn't. I'll kill this guy. <laughs> I want to know what municipal water supply he's sucking <laughs> off of if this is true. And uh, so now, but the first time you had sex with him, you were anxious to have sex with him. There was no bad blood or emotional whatever going on between you two. You were looking forward to your reunion with this guy. Right. And for almost a whole two years. And you lubricate normally. Yes, but not. Now it's just, I just have, this desire is out the window. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, yeah, but what what if, I mean, I understand uh, intercourse is painful. What about oral sex? See, and that just went out the window, too. All right, well, that doesn't, that's not explained on the basis of anything to do with his penis. And that, that goes out a different window, doesn't it? A different one, absolutely. Yeah. It's the front of the house. I see. Where's where's the back? Back that's door. A, no, that's anal. Oh. Must be a, go out like a side, like a service porch or something. Service porch. Yeah. Front yeah. Front porch. Door. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, Jennifer, is, is, are you been depressed? No. No. Nothing that I could possibly you don't, no new make No new vitamins or anything funny like that? Think about it. No. So how's okay, he... Now, now, here's the clincher. This could be... He came out um, to where I live, and we live with my parents. So I don't know if that just kind of just made it leave, you know, go out the window like I've been saying, or I don't know. It, but it, even if we, you know, try to get away and, and go somewhere, I still just, I don't know. Maybe he's not into this guy anymore. See, I don't think that's it. Oh, uh oh You may not be into him, Jennifer. No, I don't, I don't want to think that. You're, you're, I don't want to think that. You don't want to think it? But maybe it's a possibility. I don't know. I don't. Well, I mean, here, here's what we're getting at. Because women don't change anatomically in their twenties, and neither do guys. But women can change significantly if they're not into it. Oh yeah. I mean, they cannot lubricate. All of a sudden, what was uh, ecstasy can now become excruciating pain. But no, and, it's, it, it and, just... and sometimes the vagina is trying to send him a message. Yes, the vagina is saying, "Listen, we're not into this guy anymore." Yes, I don't want to think that. I can't think that. No, he's perfect. He's great. He's great. He's great. No, don't yeah, tell me that. I'm wondering, Jennifer. Yes. You've been with this guy for how many years now? Three. And they're living with their par her, his parents, her parents, her parents. Yeah. What about moving out from your parents? Oh, that's definitely going to happen soon. Okay, why is he living there with you? Um, because he just is. Because I plan on moving out. We just want to move out together. What does he do for a living? Um, I just graduated college. So. What does he do what does for he a living? Do? Oh, same with him. He's going to school right now. All right, all right. And you sure you're not maybe falling out of love a little with this guy? I don't think so. No. Okay. All right. Well, uh, off to the gynecologist. Okay. There you go. And. Thank uh, you. Yeah, I'd like to, uh, this is why guys should do uh, what I do, which is the water displacement test with my penis. I take a, a graduated beaker, and I see how many cc's of water I displace with my erect penis uh, every year on New Year's. 
Uh, ex- well, sometimes the next morning you're you get lying. a little load and it's hard you're to come right. Yes. No, this is you, true. I, you told and me I once measure you the amount a of water. Test tube. No, I use a cigar tube, actually, that I, I drew on the side of with a magic marker. How dare you? But uh, the, the point is, is I don't think this guy's penis could have grown. No. That's not it. No. Okay. You know you know what's funny? And we, we've heard a bunch of these tonight on this show, which is people sort of go to the easiest solution emotionally. Do You, you know what I mean? Which is, well, yeah. I'm not able to have sex with this guy anymore. His penis must have grown. It's it's mm-hmm. almost a sort of fairy tale solution. Anything rather than sort of examine what could possibly be the emotional cause of right, it. Right. We had the caller earlier. Uh, my girlfriend uh, doesn't have an orgasm. She's five ten, and I figure her vagina is too big. Right. right. So it's it, like, wait it, a minute. Right. It's right. her height that is uh, doing right. this. There's <laughs> nothing you can do about it. It's <laughs> just craziness. People, I, mean, I love people. Just, people just gonna figure everything out. But but emotionally, isn't it easiest to sort of latch on to something physical, intangible? You notice it always goes to something physical, like yeah. the penis size yep. or the height. It makes no sense, but you latch on to it, and then you clutch onto it with both hands, and you hold it, and you protect it, and this you say, this is it. Science is so important, because you're denying the real possibility of what's really that's going right. on. That's right. You just look at what it is, you study it, you figure it out, and there, that's what it is. I would yeah, argue, too, that just the sheer fact that you latched on to something that's sort of physically either impossible or neither here nor there, <laughs> like the height, suggests that maybe you're trying to protect yourself from something emotionally that's and right. you don't even know it. That's right. All right. We got you all figured out, you screwballs. <laughs> M- Michelle? Yeah? You're 13? Yeah. 13. What's wow. up? Um, like, a week ago, I went um, swimming with my friend, and... um. I had um, shorts on, and my, my bathing suit was underneath, and I had a shirt over it. All right. And, um, like, the next day, I, w- I was talking to my friend on the phone that I went swimming with, and she said that her mom didn't like me because the way I dressed. You ought to be ashamed of yourself! This, this is another one of those convenient thinking things. I'm sure it had nothing to do with the way you dressed that afternoon. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're- Generally, she doesn't like how you dress. Wouldn't you say that might be it? No, because she, she never said anything about it before. I understand, well, but... But you know a lot of parents are, Drew. Yeah. They want them to wear bathing suit shorts and then sweat a sweatsuit over that before they hit the pool. Well, they got wear a wetsuit, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, think the, you think she thought the fact that you're wearing shorts and a shirt over your bathing suit when you were going swimming was a little too risque? Oh, and, no. I, or as opposed to you wearing shirts where your belly are showing when you go to school? No. You don't do that. No. So you're you're a conservative dresser. Yeah. And yet she has a problem with this. Yeah. Or maybe she just has a problem with you in general. Do you think that might be it? Maybe it's not the dress code. Um, I'm, I don't think so because I like because I haven't really talked to her that much lately, my friend. Yeah. Because I um moved out of town and then I moved back into town. So right. I couldn't really talk to her. Or anything. Why'd you move away? Why'd I move away? Why'd you move away? Um, my sister. Like, I don't live with my mom. I live with my sister. Oh, that's and a bad sign. get out of town. What's up with mom? Um, she's in jail right now. All right, well, this is what your friend's mom has a problem with. Nah. Well, um, why is she in jail? Well, she she doesn't, like, get along with my grandma that much. Oh. So they she's put her in jail. jail for that? That happened to my yeah. mom. She did They uh, put her in jail for not getting along with her grandma. My mom did 13 years in Leavenworth because she got in a little blowout with my grandmother. Yeah. I don't think... You mean she tried, to, she tried to stab your grandmother with a crocheting needle, or they didn't get along? No, um, I guess she was drunk over at my grandma's house, and um, she threatened to hit my grandpa with a bat. Right, and Michelle... But there's probably a, a long history of this in order yeah. for her to be incarcerated yeah. because that's, of That's it. what your friend's mother Yeah, your mom does not want her daughter around all yeah. this. And I, you having been through this, I'm, I'm sure you wear that on your persona on the sleeve that you're not wearing yeah i'm sure you dress gonna be on you wear that on the sleeve of your sleeveless halter top (laughs) yeah Uh, all right so michelle you know we wear black all the time that kind of thing no okay well here okay so here's the tough card we got about 30 seconds here but you you've been through a lot yeah and and your mom is a troubled person Mm -hmm. and it's hard not to be troubled when you're a young lady and your mom is so troubled right 
And so whether you know it or not, and you're, you're probably a good person, but you're probably a troubled person to some degree, too. And, that the, and, and, and that's, that's to be expected because of the situation you come from. And the mother of your friend probably picks up on that troubled side of you, yeah, and she's frightened of you it. You need to find a way to contain that and not sort of wear that... A, 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 a sort of a billboard, but like you're a sign, like projecting that into the world. It, it, it's awful. At what the you've same been time, through. being a young person, that's a very hard situation to deal with. Yeah. You know, and so. and hey, uh, and Mich- they, you know, yeah. I, 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 you know, I can. It's that, that's something that can be hard to deal with. Period. And then another thing on on another level is not to uh, is is to know that that doesn't. Uh, that doesn't reflect like the type of person that you are either and that sometimes people uh pull away and and uh because of an associate of somebody that's in your family maybe is a has a pro- has problems or whatever that uh that necessarily doesn't relate directly to you that people react in ways that doesn't it doesn't mean anything of you right. about your self-worth you know well and, as a person so here's the here's the problem really it's kind of a catch-22 it right. doesn't make michelle a bad person right. that her mom was in prison yeah. unfortunately her mom being in prison and makes her do things right. that can be mistaken with a bad person, right. I understand right. that. and that's the difficult part. He's playing devil's advocate, for right? Him. No, you're you're everyone is right. That's yeah. the way I look at the world. Yeah. Well, not really. I look at it, I'm right, and everyone's <laughs> wrong. But I don't want to get into it. Here's the deal, Michelle. Um, it's going to be tough for you. It, it really is. And I'm sorry this uh, had to happen. And you have to keep a. Uh, you have to try extra hard. To not go down the path that your mom went down. There and you go. got to stay in school, and you can't get into drugs, and you can't get pregnant, and you can't run with screwballs, and you can't act out. And I'm sorry, but you have to watch yourself closely, like a, like a diabetic has to measure his insulin levels. Right, Drew? Yep. It's the same thing. So, sorry about that. Watch yourself closely, and don't worry about your friend's mom. We'll be back. Everybody, love line. I'm Adam. That's true. Jerry Cantrell's our guest tonight. We're going to uh, hear something else off the uh, new CD, Degradation Trip. We're uh, running a little bit behind tonight, and uh, it was on the screen, and then it fell off the screen, and I forgot about it. Is it Angel Eyes? The second That's title? right. Yeah. All right, you queued yeah. up there, Anderson. Let's get to it. It's called Angel Eyes. Another good one from Jerry Cantrell. Degradation Trip is the name of the CD. Out is uh, We Speak. All right, we got time for... Uh, Drew, I want to talk. This poor guy's been on hold for 65 minutes. Uh-huh. Ben? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, Ben. You're uh, 22. Your dad is 72 years old. Right, right. Well, my question's pretty much... First off, you guys, I really love your show. You do great service to a lot of people. Thanks. But um, you had a caller call last night. His problem's a little different than mine. He had a really high voice. Oh, yeah. And um, some of the things you brought up about his parents were that... Really old parents, parents suffered trauma, and parents being immigrants. And my parents kind of fall into all three of those categories. And Drew never really elaborated on to like how that would affect relationships. And I'm just well, I was really going after whether or not they were sort of war survivors, like like uh, concentration camp survivor, that kind of thing. Because he he sounded so emotionally deprived that there was no self development, and that is something that very often occurs in these very highly Self-involved parental systems. All right, but your yeah, parents. I think I'd like a large pepperoni. That was That's him. him. Yeah. Your parents' uh, age usually don't have a whole lot no, to do with it. Not necessarily. No, no. they they just kick off a little. Ben sounds fine, by, by the way. Where we sort of learn to read people, our feelings about people. Right, it seems fine. Ben, we give you uh, we give you a B. You'll be <laughs> fine. We'll take a break. B plus. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, that is the show. I want to uh, sort of thank Jerry Cantrell for coming out here tonight. And uh, I want to thank all of you for uh, listening to the show. So, until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. I guess she was drunk over at my grandma's house. And um, she threatened to hit my grandpa with a bat. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.